authority board meeting dated September 24. It's 3 p.m. and this meeting is called to order. And I'm going to invite our clerk to do a roll call vote and read the meeting statement. Angelique Ashby. I am here. Larry Carr. I saw him in there. Larry Carr. Okay. Sean Farmer. Here. There's a little bit of static. I, I am trying to see who might uh, not be. I think be that meeting. static is Larry Carr trying to say he's here. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> Hi, Larry, if you're here. Garrett Gatewood. Here. Eric Guetta. Here. Rick Jennings. I am present. Patrick Kennedy. Here. Stephanie Wynn. Don. I'm here. Susan Peters. Phil Serna. Jeffrey Slowey. Darren Soon. Here. Alan Warren. Saul Hernandez. Warren. It's, I'll be thinking, well, Larry Carr's muted now. It only comes on when Rex comes on. Oh. I, I didn't hear her. Uh, I think you we said have we have a okay. okay, I'll great. read the statement now. Yes, thank you. This meeting of the Sacramento Public Library Authority Board is cablecast live on Metro Cable 14, the local government affairs channel on the Comcast, Consolidated Communications, and AT&T U-verse cable systems. The meeting is closed captioned and webcast at www.sacmetrocable.tv. Today's meeting will be repeated Saturday, September 26 at 4 p.m. and Sunday, September 27 at 2 p.m. The meeting will also be recorded via Zoom. A DVD copy will be available no later than two weeks following today's meeting. The full agenda, including reports, is available on the library website at www.saclibrary.org. Members of the audience wishing to address the board should raise their hand in the Zoom program. Please speak clearly when addressing the board and state your name for the record. Comments are limited to three minutes so that everybody may be heard. Please also note that participation in this teleconference via telephone rather than through the Zoom app may result in your telephone number being visible to the public during the live broadcast and later, later telecast of this meeting. Okay, and at this time, I'm going to invite the illustrious director Natoli to please lead us in the pledge, if you would. All right, please rise. And the United States of America, and to the Republic for which it stands, one Stand. nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Don. And next item, please. Next item is public comments. And I'm not sure if anyone has their hands raised. I don't see anybody. I do not see any hands raised. So we'll move on to item three, presentations. And item 3.1, Friends of the Sacramento Public Library, um, Sacramento um, Public Library President Karen Wilson is uh, hopefully present. That may have been her having the static issue. It wasn't, it wasn't me. I was, oh, I was muted, but now I'm here. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> and I want to just say how nice it is to see Don Natoli in person also by joining. <laughs> <in>. <laughs> Thank you. 
Hi, <laughs> Karen. Hi, Karen. <laughs> all Hi, board Karen. members and Rivka and library staff and all the friends members present today. I don't know if you can see them, but if you're there, I can see them. Wave your hands. We have several friends members. We're trying to boost your ratings here by getting all the friends members to attend. We're doing better every meeting. Thanks to all the friends board members with us and future board members. Uh, we appreciate it. Um, I just want to let you know that the friends are excited to participate yes again, yet again this year in the ballot box um, activities at our libraries. And to the extent that we can be helpful monitoring the ballot boxes while they're out or whatever else the library needs to help us with a safe election, we're uh, excited and happy to be doing that. We're working on book first with the library's uh, innovative staff members, and I wanted to recognize and thank Donna Zick, the early learning specialist, and Christy Ham, the manager of youth and literacy, literacy services who are with us uh, at the meeting today. We just had a meeting with them about how Book First, the pandemic version, is going to work. Uh, and it is going to work, and we're very excited to uh, get that going. And that will motivate a lot, hundreds of volunteers to sort those thousands of books this year. Uh, in our socially distanced shopping appointments at the Book Den are the hottest ticket in town. So if you know anybody who's looking for books, they can get a hold of us at the Book Den and come on out and have a two hour shopping appointment. We're also working on special shopping events for teachers and parents who have kids at home doing their um, school online. So that's, that's an exciting uh, aspect for us of what the Book Den is able to do in community outreach at this time. So thank you very much for the opportunity to speak to you. Thank you, Karen, and thank you for your commitment to the library and all that you you are doing for us. Thank you. And next item, please. Item 3.2, proclamation celebrating National Friends of the Library Week, October 18th to October 24, 2020. Um, yes, thank you. Uh, our, our friends mean more to us than we can even begin to say. And with Friends of the Library Week coming up uh, just before our next board meeting, or kind of right in the middle of it, we thought it would, was more appropriate to present it now as we will be sharing it with, um, with other jurisdictions, with all the jurisdictions that we serve in the hopes that they too will acknowledge the work that the friends do throughout Sacramento City and County. Uh, so Chair Frost, I'll turn it over to you if you like. Okay. And um, at this time, I'm thrilled to present um, a proclamation. Uh, did you want me to read the proclamation, Rivka, or or, did, or were you just? Um, I think it's that that's chair's prerogative. You can either read okay. all of the all of the proclamation or just the uh, resolved clause, and we can all. Um, um, okay, I uh, I just uh, am honored to present this procl proclamation recognizing the friends of the Sacramento Public Library uh, for National Friends of Library Week uh, and. I'm gonna go ahead and read the proclamation. I think there's some important um, information uh, in there that um, kind of gives us an idea of all that they're doing. The National Friends of the Library Week will be celebrated throughout the nation and Sacramento County and all the cities and communities therein from October 18, 2020 to October 24, 2020. And the Friends of the Sacramento Public Library are library advocates community ambassadors, volunteers, fundraising partners, and true friends. Uh, the Friends are the library's official fundraising partner, uh, providing more than $300,000 annually to support the library programs, collections, and services in all 28 locations of our library uh, authority. The Friends of the Sacramento Public Library have impacted the lives of first graders throughout Sacramento County thanks to their generous support of the public, uh, the library's Book First program. And the Friends have raised more than $233,000 and six, uh, $233,000 for the library's Book First program to provide 50,986 books. Um, to first graders in 661 schools. That's a lot of books. 
in the four year um, book first, um, in the four years, book first has been a library initiative. The Friends have helped youth services librarians visit 2,174 classrooms in 661 schools. And whereas the Friends believe in and promote civic engagement and volunteer in libraries to monitor ballot boxes, assist voter service centers, ensure that the election days are safe and successful, and the friend's gift to, of time and commitment to the Sacramento Public Library sets an example for all in how volunteerism leads to positive civic engagement and advancement in our community. And now therefore I um, be it resolved that the Sacramento Pe Public Library Authority Board does hereby proclaim National Friends of the Library Week and thank the hundreds of friends who have supported and enhanced our libraries. Thank you very much. And I'm, um, I wish I could be there in person to present this um, to you in person, Karen, uh, uh, we, and to all of you, uh, we, we deeply appreciate your commitment to the library and um, you, um, you have no idea the support you give um, helps us do even more than um, we thought we could. And so thank you very much for all that you do. Thank you. Our support of the library is our number one mission and we'll be there. Thank you. Thank you. Madam Chair, if I could just for a quick second. Sure, thank you, Angelique. Director. Yeah, I just, Karen is, uh, somebody close to me and out here in Natomas. And I just want to thank her for her dedication. I feel like I uh, won the lottery as it relates to friends of the library. Natomas is full of these just absolutely wonderful people who are so supportive of all of us and of the library system and of Rivka. And I'm, we're just really fortunate. And I just want to make sure she knows that I'm grateful to her personally and to the friends out here that, you know, I don't know if you guys know this, occasionally it comes up, but North Natomas has been able to raise quite a bit of money. They've actually adopted two other branches in North Sac that they help. And I, I'm just really, I'm perpetually proud of them. So the friends in general and the North Natomas branch and Karen in particular, so North and South Natomas doing big things. Thank you so, so very much for your dedication. And one last thing, Chair Frost, uh, Council Member Carr has been on the call and I just want the record to reflect that he was present for the meeting, but in order for him to have sound and audio, it, it is disturbing our recording. So he's gonna log off. And I understand we do still have a quorum. So uh, Rivka, is that all right? Yes. Okay, great. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Director Ashby. Okay, well, thank you again, Karen. And are there any other board members who wanted to comment? Okay, hearing none, we'll move to the next item, please, Heather. Item number four is closed session. Would you like me to say the statement? No. Uh, at this uh, time, I, I, uh, we are recommending that we postpone the closed session to um, our October meeting. And so I'm inviting um, a board member who might move, I believe we, we need to vote to postpone it. Is that correct, Heather? Or do we need a vote to postpone? Need a motion and a second in order so, to vote to postpone. So Go. moved, Madam Chair. Second, Thank Madam you. Chair. Director Gira, um, motion by Director Gira, second, I believe, by Director Jennings. Correct. Is that, okay. And um, if you'd please do a roll call vote for us. And Angelique Ashby? Yes. Um, Sue Frost? Yes. Garrett Gatewood? Eric Guerra? Yes. Rick Jennings? Yeah. Yes. Uh, Stephanie Wynn? Yes. Donna Tolley? Aye. Darren Thune? Yes. And it's unanimous with all members present. 
Uh, uh, also, uh, record uh, Member Kennedy. Patrick as Patrick well. Kennedy, I'm sorry. Thank you, Director Kennedy. Okay, motion carries. And next item, please. Item five, Director's Report. Thank you, Heather. <clears throat> um, I will refer the board to my, actually, I'm, I'm going to take a little leeway here since we're six feet apart in the room and uh, remove my mask for a moment um, and refer the board to my written report. Uh, there are a couple of items I would like to call out and that is that uh, once again, summer reading was um, a little bit different from our usual crazy busy time, but people still participated and participated enthusiastically. And we still had um, about 6,200 participants who read 126,000 books. So we're pretty happy about that. And we tried something a little bit different. We did a virtual uh, celebration at the end featuring uh, musician Jim Gill. And I think that was, and it was replayed for about a week. So people who could not participate in real time were able to enjoy that. And because, um, all of us, Jared, let's see, I wanna, because we miss our public so much. Remember, we're public librarians, that the name is who we are. Um, we've prepared a little PowerPoint that uh, we wanna share with you that relates to how much we miss people, how much we love them, and frankly, how much they love us. So I'm going to bring that up and, um, We've decided that maybe from now on, uh, this particular screen needs to show you. This is staff at the Arcade Library who are letting the public know how much we miss them in uh, a couple of different languages and reminding them that washing your hands is the very best thing you can do to keep us all safe. So um, these are the kinds of things that people are leaving with us as they pick up books, as they pick up items from our personal shopping service. And of course, we love, we love hearing that we're essential, but we especially love those notes from kids. As you can see, these are brand new readers and writers who are letting us know how they feel about us. Um, some other uh, love notes that we've gotten include uh, just, again, um, I, I love the one, I don't know if you can see it kind of in the middle of the page on the right. I won't say the word, but um, you get the drift uh, about how much, how much people really appreciate what we're trying to do for them. And the, the ways that, we're that we are working to stay connected and the ways that we are making sure that, um, that people are getting what they need from, from the library. So it makes me, uh, I think it makes all of us feel very grateful for how people, um, how people are seeing the library. Here's the personal, uh, some personal shopper uh, comments, North Natomas, Galt, Bell Coolidge, you name it. Uh, and then as well as a love letter from, I believe a nine-year-old girl, 11 year old girl uh, talking about how much she loves our summer reading program and loves and misses the library. So, we also wanted to share something else with you. And this represents where we've all been in the last six months and one week. Um, as you all well know in the work that you have to do in your official capacity. So we put together a little timeline, not a little timeline, it's a pretty extensive timeline about the changes that we had to make with closures the services that we began offering. You can see that we closed on March 18th and began offering job coach service on March 22nd, story times on March 26th, live reading recommendations on March 27th, book clubs on March 28th, uh, a dial-a-poem for National Poetry Month, book clubs, quarantine book clubs, happy hours, summer reading, bilingual story times, making face shields for essential workers in the county and other areas, helping out with the Great Plates program, doing census work, resuming mobile services, 
all of our author events. We've had some amazing author events, starting with secret former Secretary of State Madam Madeline Albright, and just the other night we had uh, the world's most famous librarian Nancy Pearl who joined us, and again all of the things that we offered um, offered during the summer and up until this date. So um, that was a, a a really quick share of just a few of the things that uh, that we've been able to offer. And I think Christy Ham is on, and I just wondered if she wanted to add anything about our summer reading program. It really was a challenge for us, but um, I know she probably has something to share with us. Um, I definitely, I don't want to, I know we are pressed for time, but summer reading did happen and people were really appreciative. I think um, we heard all, you saw all the comments from all of our readers and how uh, happy they were. We got some great press for our glow in the dark summer reading medals this year, which turns out they were a status symbol and some of our lawn signs. So we really are trying to spread the word. Uh, you'll see in the statistical report that our, our youth services programming in a virtual environment really did reach an amazing audience audience, over 10,000 people just in August alone. So the library has been hard at work trying to connect to readers of all different ages. And uh, we did a lot of different things this year, including advertising, paid and earned to get the word spread. Thank you for our amazing communications team. So. Thank you, Christy. And that, does that complete your report, Rivka? Oh, I'm sorry. Yes, it does, Chair Frost. Thank you. Okay. Uh, that's great. Thank you so much. I'm blown away at the amazing uh, job that you've done in the face of a hurricane of challenges and change. Um, and I think um, it was also surprising to see how much people rely emotionally and physically on, on our library system and how important the library system is through all this. I think I, for one, learned that um, it's a vital, a vital part of our community. And, uh, and so thank you for all the great work that you guys have done to get us as active as we could be under the circumstances. Thank and you. I, I, yeah. oh, go I'm ahead. sorry. I just wanted to say the the other thing uh, that as of today, we now have 14 libraries who are able to offer, I'm sorry, we have 14 libraries offering computer appointments. So we're pretty excited about that as well. And that allows in-person service for people who probably need us most who don't have computers at home and don't have access. That's great. And I think those are the people that have suffered through the COVID too, because they need, they have school, but it's, you know, from a distance. And if they don't have the equipment, it's, it's hard. So that's great. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Um, with that, we'll move on to our next item, please. Item six information. Okay, and item 6.1 is our monthly financial report for um, dated July 2020. This is an informational item. Uh, if there are any members who have questions or comments, we can take time for that now, or we can just move forward. And seeing no hands raised and nobody speaking up, we will move on to next item, please. Item seven is a consent agenda. Okay, and do we have any members who want to pull any items from consent or do we have a motion and a second um, for a roll call vote? Madam Chair, I'll move consent. Uh, director, okay, uh, motion by Director Soon and second by Director Jennings and roll call vote, please. Angelique Ashby? Yes. Sue Frost? Yes. Garrett Gatewood? Yes. Eric Guerra? Aye. Rick Jennings? Yes. Patrick Kennedy? Aye. Stephanie Nguyen? Yes. Donna Tolley? Aye. Darren Soon? Aye. And it's unanimous with members present. Thank you, Heather. And next item, please. 
Next item, number eight, action. Okay, this item 8.1 is our proposed final budget for fiscal year 2021. Um, and our budget committee met and I'm assuming Johnny is possibly going to present. Are you Johnny or? Um, yes, Chair Frost, uh, if that's okay with Rebecca. Absolutely, Johnny, take it away. Okay, thank you, Rebecca, uh, Chair Frost, and members of the board. Um, such a beautiful day for a, uh, for a meeting, so. Um, and uh, we are absolutely glad that Donna Tolley is able to join us in video in person, so that's a great sign. Um, so <laughs> anyhow, uh, we're here to discuss the, um, the fiscal year budget for um, fiscal year 2021, uh, position control and the fines and fees schedule. Um, as you know, the COVID-19 pandemic um, is still an ongoing uh, health, social, and economic concerns for um, the Sacramento region as well as the national um, you know, level. So um, it, we're still trying to adjust and uh, figure out the next steps. Um, as you know, um, the vaccine is still in the works. Um, as of last week, there were still about 12 million in employ unemployment cases um, nationwide. Um, that's a pretty nice um, drop from, you know, where we were um, back in April, which was about 50 to 60 million unemployment. So, um, again, that's a great sign in terms of economics and unemployment. Um, school, as you know, um, you know, they're still trying to figure out remote learning, hybrid learning, and um, the like. So, um, we are all trying to adjust to it. Um, businesses are starting to reopen, um, so we're making plans, uh, just like the library. Um, as Rifka mentioned, we, you know, we had curbside pickup. Um, we're working on um, opening uh, computer appointments, and then um, ultimately the next steps would be to open the library, um, uh, you know, uh, fully to uh, the patrons and the public. Um, so at this point, what we don't know, we still do not know um, in terms of uh, major revenue sources um, such as the county of Sacramento property tax payment that the library gets um, and also the city of Sacramento general fund contribution. In terms of property taxes, um, it, um, you know, it, it could go both ways. Um, right now, it's still unknown. Um, you know, with the housing market, um, things are, uh, the homes are being bought and, you know, sold and bought. Um, you know, fairly quick, um, so the demand for housing in, in the Sacramento Valley is still um, in high demand. So that in turn could possibly even bump up our property tax revenues in uh, future fiscal years, but right now it's still unknown. So um, in terms of the budget, we've been um, keeping it conservative. Um, we've kept um, in contact with uh, the county assessor to make sure that we um, uh, budget properly in terms of our projections. Um, city of Sacramento general fund contribution, again, it, um, it depends on how the city does with um, the sales tax and other TOT taxes that the city normally gets for general fund. Um, so we'll find out probably the next couple of months to um, see whether we would need to deal with any, uh, with any budget cuts or um, anything like, like that at all from the city of Sacramento. Um, so I'm going to refer you to the staff reports for um, all of the details, but I would like like to highlight um, some of the changes, um, and then we'll go through a few of the exhibits, um, if I may, to um, kind of walk you through uh, the fund balances, um, the revenue projections, and expenditures. Um, Jared, if I can uh, share the screen, please. So here is the, um, this is the fund balance schedule. Um, so this gives us a really nice, um, you know, three year um, 
on look on the fund balances and where we were in terms of the audit um, as of fiscal year 2019, um, we ended the year at 40.2 million. Um, and then in fiscal year 20, um, we're, we're still wrapping up the books and uh, getting ready for um, the final audit next week. So uh, revenues were estimated at about 50.9 million and expenditures at 50.7 million for fiscal year 20 and estimated fund balance of 41.5 million uh, as of fiscal year 20. And then looking ahead in fiscal year 21, um, as you know, we adopted the um, preliminary budget back in May. Um, so the September final is to true up any numbers that we are um, comfortable with uh, changing and updating. So revenue wise, um, we're looking at 50.8 million um, overall fund um, revenue projections and 55 million in expenditures. Um, and then in terms of economic uncertainty, uh, for the county fund, we're estimating at 10.6 million. And this is based on the 35% um, reserve that uh, was adopted back in, um, back in May, two years ago. Um, and then the city of Sacramento side is 2.3 million for a general fund um, for economic uncertainty and 1.1 in measure B, measure X, and uh, approximately 400,000 in measure B, uh, respectively. Um, so the combined fund balance is 14 million in economic uncertainty and about 22.9 um, million in fund reserve fund balance overall. So um, do you have any questions on this page? I do not yeah. see. Uh, any, yes, did someone have questions? I don't see any hands raised, Johnny. Okay, thank, thank you, Chair Frost. Um, so I'm gonna move on to exhibit A3. Um, so this is taking a look at our revenue projections. Um, so our revenues are, we're projecting at 50.8 million. And the major changes are, um, 1.6 million in the city of Sacramento contributions. Um, this is part of the step up increase uh, to support the library services. Um, you know, going back to about 10 years ago when we built three new libraries, um, we, we ran into the um, economic recession um, back then. So the city um, is slowly but surely helping the library in terms of um, catching up. So I'd like to thank um, Don Holmes, the finance director, uh, for the city of Sacramento and the city council uh, for um, Sacramento for their support of the library and uh, making this happen. Um, and then also the other, other notable changes are the, um, the gallery of revenues. Um, so right here, we're anticipating to um, decrease the revenues by 400,000. So essentially we've um, closed the, uh, the gallery um, since March and uh, we do not anticipate the proms, um, the major weddings, and the big events to come back anytime soon. So uh, this is a pretty big dip in terms of um, uh, revenue sources for uh, the city of, city of Sacramento General Fund, uh, Fund 202. Um, and then fines and fees, uh, we are um, projecting to decrease overall by 410,000. Um, so this is a portion of the county fund, so 228 for the county, 133 for uh, City of Sacramento, and approximately 49,000 for um, postal tax X. Um, so the, this decrease is mainly, um, we're, we're, we're pushing back any overdue books. Um, we're not charging um, past due fees and fines. Um, and also the, the budget audit committee when we met last week, um, recommended that um, Rivka is given the authority, which is also in the staff report, um, to defer any collection efforts. Um, you know, one to minimize any you know stress that's going to be added onto our patrons, and then also if we send people to collection, um, the library is incurring a cost to um, uh, for any collection efforts. So um, the the recommendation is to uh, suspend any um, fines and fees that will be charged to um, the patrons for uh, library um, content. 
Um, and then passport. So this 60,000 decrease is for passport services. Um, so as you know, the airline industry is one of the um, industry that's taking a major hit um, in terms of um, the, the economics and uh, travel. So um, we, again, with the closure, we have not been able to uh, process any passport or take any pictures uh, for um, for customers. So this is part of the um, uh, recommended decrease for passport services. Um, so in in total, we're looking at approximately uh, almost 900,000 in revenue decreases um, in light of the um, COVID-19 impacts. Um, so that's revenues. Um, any questions on revenues? On the, so on the expenditure side, um, we're looking at 55 million in expenditures and roughly 1.6 million in increases. Um, the bulk of the increase is, so this is comparing from the May adopted budget to uh, where we are now for the September final. Um, the major increase is for the Orangeville uh, branch expansion project, uh, which is about 1.6 million. And um, of that amount, 500,000 is for um, infrastructure improvements, so building improvements. And another 100,000 is for um, added collection when we reopen up. So um, that's a major increase. Uh, we were also recommending to increase the books and materials budget by $700,000. Um, and a couple of things um, with the COVID-19 closure, uh, e-books and audio books have been in high demand. Um, and then the other issue we had last year was um, they were major shipping delays to get books to uh, the library. So um, that was a challenge. And so we're recommending to um, restore the book budget by 700,000, bring the book, total book budget to uh, $7 million for fiscal year uh, 2021. Um, and then also 100,000 is recommend to be increased in uh, services and supplies um, and another 100,000 for an in-kind grant contribute um, grant matching uh, for contingency when we apply for grants and um, and uh, money from the um, you know state or the federal level um, and then 900,000 is being decreased in overall salaries and benefits so you, you have here 527 in the county fund um, a thousand in Sacramento and uh, salaries and benefits in parcel tax X is 278 and 109 in parcel tax uh, B respectively. Um, this is mainly the shelver budget um, that we unfortunately had to uh, lay off in, in light of the uh, COVID-19 pandemic. Um, I know Rivka and the public services managers and the team are, are working hard to um, bring back the shelter um, as, as soon as we can. So uh, hopefully uh, things will get better and we can um, you know, pull, pull our, uh, our wonderful shelters and staff back to, um, back to work soon. Um, so that's the expenditure exhibit. Um, so do you have any questions at all? Um, so, since there's no question, um, so just a quick update on the COVID-19 expenditures. Um, we did incur about 2.8 million in um, paying staff for um, for compliance with the federal um, guidelines and also in compliance with um, the board's direction and approval. Um, we were able to help out the city of Sacramento with um, the Great Page program. Um, in, in total, our staff, um, you know, made calls and uh, supported the city um, of about 500 hours, close to 500 hours from late May to um, current day. So, um, you know, we're great partners with the city and the county. So um, that was one one way for staff to uh, to keep active and uh, continue uh, to work for the library and support any any partners that we um, that we can and uh, call upon. Um, so, in terms of uh, purchasing supplies and protective measures, uh, we spent approximately 600000 
in uh, PPE, um, security services, um, other supplies such as uh, disinfect, disinfection um, sprays, uh, cleaning services to come in and uh, disinfect the library that um, you know, need, needs deep cleaning. So, um, and then in fiscal year 21, we spent um, almost 140,000 in protected, protected measure costs. Um, so all these amounts here, um, except for the salaries, which is not reimbursable by FEMA, uh, will be submitted through um, the FEMA grants portal. And they will ultimately, uh, keeping my fingers crossed, um, that we will get uh, the 75% 70, reimbursement back from FEMA. Um, so that's just a quick update on the COVID-19 expenditures. Any questions on that? So a couple other things. Um, position control. Um, in May, we adopted 299 positions. And for September final, um, we're recommending to increase uh, the staffing level by two FTEs. Uh, one is for a library assistant. Um, this will cover, help cover the Delta branches. Um, they have very limited staff, so this will help with coverage and uh, expand on the program. Um, and then another position is to um, increase the IT um, technician position by one FTE. Um, so in light of the uh, COVID-19 closure, um, lots, of, lots, lots and lots of stuff are uh, going remote and electronic nowadays. So um, this made sense. Um, and we're, so we're recommending to increase one FTE in the um, IT department. Um, and then the other two positions are um, mainly we're repurposing two positions. Um, and so eliminating the custodial custodian and, and a project facility project manager, and then replacing those positions with a General, general services worker and a early learning and development manager position. Um, so this will um, better meet, meet the library's needs, um, you know, uh, in the current uh, operations as well as uh, down the road. And then for fines and fees, um, again, the yellow highlights are the only changes that we're recommending, and, and this is mainly to um, to not charge any or, or to spend uh, fines and fees on overdue books or any um, collection efforts that we would normally um, uh, process. So uh, hopefully this will um, alleviate any stress on the customers and our patrons and our, our, uh, the public in general. Um, so once uh, hopefully pand once the COVID-19 um, you know, blows over and things get, get back to normal, uh, we can go back and reinstate a normal process and continue with our collection efforts. Um, so that's, uh, that's my report. Um, Rivka, do you have anything else to add? Johnny, you did such a thorough job. You left me with, you left me speechless for a change. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. But seriously, if there are any questions, uh, we do believe that the suspension of fines right now is the, the right way to go. And it's just easier all the way around. And I think uh, the rest of Johnny's presentation, as always, was very clear. Yeah, thank you, Johnny, for managing the budget so well. And, and I, I'll also mention that the budget committee um, concurred with staff's recommendation and if no one has any questions, uh, I don't see any hands raised. I'll call for public comment. And I don't believe I see or hear any public comment. So I'll ask for a motion for approval. So moved, Natoli. Thank you, Director Natoli. Seconded by Guerra. And seconded by Director Guerra and a roll call vote, please. Angelique Ashby. Yes. Sue Frost. Yes. Garrett Gatewood. Yes. Eric Guerra. Rick Jennings. Yes. Patrick Kennedy. Aye. Stephanie Wynn. Yes. Donna Tolley. 
Aye. And Darren Soon. Aye. And it's unanimous with members present. Thank you, Heather. And next item is reports, ideas, questions from the board, and I'll just kick it off by giving you a little bit of an update. Um, we had our several mediation sessions with federal magistrate judge in our intellectual property litigation, and I'm, um, we're all very happy to report that we reached an agreement on a con a conditional settlement terms this morning. And we st still need to put together a formal agreement, uh, but generally speaking, it's consistent with what um, the board had delegated, the, the delegation of settlement authority provided at the last board meeting. And given that and the time timing on everything, we're gonna be bringing it back for a final, um, uh, bringing back the final uh, agreement, which we're still work, our attorneys are still working on and we'll bring it to our next board meeting as an informational item. But it, um, it's a win-win for everyone, I think, and um, we're all very happy that we've reached that agreement. And I'm, uh, I'll ask if there are any other board members who wish to comment or have questions. Hearing none and seeing none, this meeting is adjourned. Thank you, everyone. Bye, everybody. Great to see you, Don. Bye, everybody. See you guys.